Hey, it's Garrett Biss. Thanks for joining me today for part three of this three-part series. So this week we've been talking about different topics under the context of or under the heading of living a better life in recovery. So a couple days ago we started out by talking about mindset and how important it is to have the right mindset for uh, for our life so that we can engage, we can show up the way that we want to, and some different things that we can do to make sure that we have that, that positive mindset, have the most uh, empowering mindset that we can so that we can overcome those obstacles, we can seek a better future, and we can achieve greater things in the future than we have in the past. Uh, then we talked about filling the void. So we, I mentioned all addiction are a manifestation or maladaptive coping mechanism trying to deal with some form of pain. All addictions end in pain. And unfortunately, many of the addictive behaviors and substances that we seek to deal with that pain end up creating more pain than what we were trying to get away from, which creates that downward spiral that many of us are familiar with. So when you find yourself in recovery, when you've made that decision, begin your journey in recovery, it's very important to go back and try to fill in that void wherever that pain is coming from. For some people, it shows up because of lack of meaning and purpose. Some people, it's lack of connection, lack of bonding, lack of connection with their true self and the way that they show up is inauthentic. I've certainly experienced that at times in my life and it created a tremendous amount of pain. But for every person, there's a different reason, a different source of that pain. It's very important in recovery to always seek that void or seek to fill that void, understand that void and make sure that it doesn't become a continuous source of pain for the rest of your recovery. Otherwise, your recovery is not going to be the joyous, the fulfilling, the happy experience that it can be. It's merely going to be an experience where you continue to suffer against that, uh, that void in your life. So once we've got the mindset, once we've done some work to help fill that void and understand what that void is, now it's really important to what we're talking about today, the wind in our sail or setting that sail. And what I mean by this, what we're talking about is having something that helps pull us forward. So it's really easy to fall down if we don't have momentum, if we're not making progress, if we're not working towards something. Think of yourself, if you're trying to ride a bike, it's nearly impossible to stay up straight on a bicycle if you're not moving forward, but once you are moving forward, it's extremely easy to maintain balance and to stay upright. If you're swimming, it's the same thing. It's much easier to remain afloat if you're swimming, if you're kind of planing over the top of the, uh, of the water, but the minute you stop, you'll begin to sink. So in life and in recovery, it's very much the same way. The more motion that we have, the more movement that we have, the more engaged that we are, the easier it is to live and to enjoy our life in recovery. So it's very important. So a couple different ways that we can do this. One of the ways is by continuing to set goals. Think about what we want in the future. Think about the ways that we want to grow, the things that we want to experience, things that we want to become, things that we want to have. Think about these things and set goals to achieving it. It can be significant things. It can be, you know, you want to go back and get a degree. You want to change your career. You want to amass a certain fortune. Or it can be really simple things. Maybe you just want a house that doesn't have as much clutter. You want to um, go experience a new town, a new city, maybe there's a place that you want to travel. All these things can be goals, but when we set those goals, it comes with a lot of empowerment. There's a lot of benefits that come from that, just that process of setting goals. For one, it gives us a destination to go to. We can't make progress. We can't move towards something. We can't have that movement that helps us thrive in our recovery if we don't know where we're going. It's very hard to set goals. It's very hard to make decisions in the moment if we don't know what direction we want to get to. And once we set those goals, it can be very easy to decide what we need to do today or what we need to invest our time and energy into because we have a clear idea of where we're trying to go or something that we want to accomplish. So setting goals is very empowering in that way. But then it also helps us keep engaged. When we know where we're trying to go, it helps us engage in the moment. It helps us decide what we want to do in the moment, what we want to spend our time, our energy with in the moment. Uh, one of the greatest threats to recovery and to sobriety is boredom. And when you don't have things to do, when you're not actively engaged in things, that's where that boredom comes from. That's where it manifests and it creates a lot of that pain. It, 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 uh, it, it opens up that void that you might have tried to escape from in the past because that boredom just feeds into that. So when we are engaged, when we are engaged in things that are meaningful to us, when we're trying to work towards goals, it helps prevent a lot of that boredom that can come up and seep in, which is that great threat to recovery. There's also this magnificent benefit that we get from having goals and working towards goals. And it's one of the forms, one of the many forms of happiness that we can experience in our life, the positive emotions that we can experience in our life. One of the ways that we get that or we experience that or achieve that is by having perceived progress towards a goal. 
So when we set a goal and we can perceive our progress toward that goal, uh, as we're going on that journey towards that goal, the perceived progress towards that goal is a source of happiness. It is something that gives us those good positive emotions inside, makes us feel good about ourselves, makes us feel good about the things that we're doing, just helps us experience some of that euphoria that maybe we sought previously through actions and through substances. But by having a goal and perceiving progress towards that goal, this is a whole nother source of happiness that we get to tap into. And again, it can be a huge goal. It can be something that's large. It can be something that you're going to be working on for the next couple of years, or it can be something small that maybe you're going to clean up in a week or in a couple of weeks. Maybe it'll be something that you achieve. But when you can perceive your progress towards it, you get this sensation of happiness. You get these good positive emotions, these empowering emotions. And that's something you can experience the whole time that you're working toward that goal. So the, the experience that we have when we reach a goal, that's more of a hedonistic kind of happiness or a kind of joy, and that's something that's fleeting. It comes and it goes momentarily. The minute that you cross that finish line, the minute that you achieve that thing or purchase that thing that you were saving for, there's a moment, maybe a day at most, or maybe a few days uh, as you're really living into and experiencing that the, the win that you got, there's a couple moments there where you're going to feel that hedonistic sense of happiness, but it very, very quickly fades. Well, that's the benefit of having that goal and working towards that goal because the entire time that you're on that journey towards reaching that goal, you get to tap into and experience that other form of happiness, the eudaimonic happiness, that happiness that comes from perceiving our progress towards a goal. So these are things that happiness that comes, these positive emotions that come, these are things that further fuel our ability to engage, those further uh, propel that movement that we're trying to make or that we're making that helps us stay upright and keeps us from falling down again. And there's many different things that we can set goals on, many different ways that we can progress in our lives, that we can create that motion and move forward in our lives. But if we wanna get the greatest return on the investment of the time and energy and attention that we invest, wanna get the greatest return on that, then finding goals and finding those things that bring the greatest source of meaning to our life, that's where we're going to get the greatest return. And for every person, there's something different that you find more meaningful or most meaningful. When you can find those things that are most meaningful to you and engage in those things, and it doesn't always have to be service related or charity related, find some hobbies that are most meaningful to you. Find some activities, maybe some sports, maybe some art that you like to enjoy, maybe just a certain activity or traveling, whatever it is, there's, there's things that you can do that will provide a greater return of that joy, of that happiness, of that engagement, that feeling of engagement, um, and, and those motives, the, those motivations that you need to keep going, there's certain things that you can do that will provide a greater return for that. So by tapping into or identifying those things, you get a much greater return for your time, energy, and attention. And I've done, I've, we've talked about some practices that you can do for that. If you want some help learning how to find those things that are more important to you, there's some exercises that I provide in the five-day um, Greater Meaning, Purpose, and Joy Challenge. And that's a free challenge that you can take over five days. I share a couple short lessons, but there's some things I talk about there on how you can identify specifically to you what are those things that will provide the greatest return to that joy. So you can invest your time and energy in those things and, and get the greatest return for that, for that investment. But it's very important to have things that you're working towards. It's very important to be engaged in things because this keeps our hands and keeps our mind active and engaged and helps us really live into and become a better version of ourselves. It helps us uh, you know, overcome some of those things, some of those challenges that we faced in the past, maybe make up for some of the things that we've done in the past and really help us get the most out of the present and prepare ourselves for the best future free of those behaviors and substances that we experienced in the past that we're trying to get away from. So mindset, go back, watch the first video on the series, talks about mindset. Remember some of those things that we talk about that you can do. Peace, finding that inner peace. And keeping some things in wind in your sails, a comment agreed on the arts and the crafts for sure, absolutely changing your life. So certainly one of the most important things in recovery is finding other things that we can do to replace those bad habits and behaviors that we created in the past. You can't you can't just remove a habit or a behavior and not replace it with something else. It creates a vacuum. Vacuums don't survive in nature. So the minute that you replace something or, or to remove something from your life that you want to get rid of, you need to bring something back into it that's healthy and that's rewarding uh, and, and provides positive benefits to you. Finding those joys, finding those things that are most meaningful to you absolutely provide that greatest gain, that greatest return. So thank you for checking out this video. Uh, I see some comments coming in. I will certainly respond and make some comments. Uh, 
as soon as I end this. But thanks for checking out this video, and please provide any questions that you have, provide any insights, provide any comments. I'm really trying to foster and grow this uh, Life on Chain community, and one of the ways that we do that by providing some insight, by providing tools, by providing resources that can be encouragement, that can be inspiration and be support for the rest of the members in the group. Collectively, we can come together and be much better than any individual one of us can be alone. So anything that you can do or anything I can do, any ideas that you have for different ways that I can serve this community, serve, um, serve this group, I would love to know. So please reach out to me. And if there's anything I can do to serve you individually, one-on-one -on -one outside of this group, then please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to have that conversation. Thanks for checking out this three-part series. If you missed any of them, you can go back. They're saved in the feed. And I'm sure that you know some people that will get some benefit from these conversations and from some of these resources. Please invite them to our group so that we can help grow this community and help serve more people in need. But you have an awesome day. Thanks for checking out this video. And I look forward to connecting with you again.